All right, let's do it, people. Hello, everyone. This is Sab here, Sab in Paris, for another Sunday evening. For me, it's Sunday evening. Infinite creativity. Sab sang with Sab in Paris. We can talk about creativity. We can talk about productivity. We can talk about anything curious. And we can talk about anything infinite as well. Anything is possible. Uh, let me get rid of this, see if I pop up here. Yeah, here I am. This is me, Sab in Paris. Nice to see you. Well, not see you, but uh, if you watch this live, if you watch this on the replay, everything is cool. So uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what this is about, what's going to happen, what isn't going to happen, what might happen. Anything might happen, of course. <laughs> and in fact, I don't know what's going to happen. For example, I've just found a, um, hang on, where's the camera? This doesn't want to focus. What about that? Do you know what this is? Well, it doesn't want to focus, but I'm trying to show you a hemp seed. How about that? Yep, I've got, I've got wild hemp seeds roaming around my apartment at the moment. Uh, this is because I put them in here. I put them in Xander's balls. These are Xander's balls, and I've been having fun uh, playing with Xander's balls in the last little while, which is which is nice. I'm learning to juggle, and um, learning being the operative word. I think you're always learning. You're always learning everything, aren't you? But um, I'm, I'm definitely learning, <laughs> very, very learning to juggle. And I can do about, the maximum I've done is, hang on, I'm either going to put this in my coffee or it goes, you throw, throw, throw. Wow, that nearly went to my coffee. Scary stuff. Anyway, obviously, it's not going to work while you're watching me, is it? So anyway, I have managed to do throw them up and catch them 10 times. That's not throw one, catch one. That's throw, 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 throw. About 10 times. It's like mild panic. And I do it over a sofa. Very interesting if you're learning to juggle. Do it over a sofa. Your legs against the edge of the sofa so that when you throw them too far away, they hit the wall and bounce back. When you drop them, yeah, it does happen. They land on the sofa. Half the time they roll off the sofa, but at least at least for half of the time they're on the sofa. You don't have to bend your knees too much. <clears throat> so anyway, that's kind of um, random. Uh, let me tell you what isn't random about this. <laughs> Is there anything that isn't random? Possibly, possibly. I'm going to share the 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 comments here somewhere yeah here we are uh, what's that doing there so this here in this comment it says what you're supposed to do ask your questions here it says give me some context by starting your questions with one of the following four words depending on the general topic you don't have to put in the emojis C ask me about creativity ask me about productivity ask me about curiosity that's anything about you know the the wild weird and wonderful curiosities of life because life is kind of crazy don't you think and infinity is more about life the universe and everything i mean look i'm not an expert but i'm not not an expert i've been living life for oh god 54 years now so i can talk about those 54 years as experienced by this i could do that and that's all i claim to do i mean i god i remember sitting you know on bed on beds in bed sits as a student or even before like in my late teens or even possibly mid-teens um thinking about life the universe and everything whilst listening to i don't know stairway to heaven child in time um the beatles maybe um cashmere by led zeppelin there's a good track to get spaced out to um so you know that does that does it for me I'll, I'll talk about anything to do with uh with anything really anything to do with life the universe and everything anything to do with the the funny side of life anything to do with productivity and creativity those are the two kind of key ones and the others are they're not really supplementary but they're they're on the menu and i will talk about my stuff what i've done this week um, with very much the idea being that you ask me questions so that I can respond to those. I, I don't answer questions. I 
talk about them. It's like, you know, someone brings up a topic and we talk about it because I do firmly believe that I can't answer anybody's questions. It's very debatable whether I can answer my own. And it's also debatable whether questions have any meaning at all and whether they're even ask, worth asking. How about that? <laughs> so bye. <laughs> Um, but having said that, it's, it seems to be fun to chat about stuff. So that's what I do for two hours. I have a chat with myself. I chat with you. Anyone who wants to ask a question, you can say hello, but that doesn't really lead to much of a, much of a discussion. I will possibly stimulate ideas by, or questions by showing you my stuff. This isn't supposed to be an ego trip. It's just that the only stuff that I can show you that that is genuinely new creative stuff uh, that has been created by me is my stuff. So that's why that's why I've decided to do it. It's a way of putting myself out there. I love it when I see other things people have created. So I don't see why I shouldn't put my stuff out there. And maybe that'll stimulate some ideas from from other people as well for other people. So the topic of this was is and maybe. Um, the best preparation is none at all. There it is, if you can see that. Random theme, the best preparation is none at all. Now it is random, because I just thought of it a, a little while ago. But this comes up from my thoughts of during the week. And I was thinking about preparing for this and whether I should or not. And then I thought, I'm not going to prepare. And I felt this huge sense of relief when I realized that suddenly there was no pressure whatsoever. I decided not to prepare. So it was as though, I mean, it didn't take away the need if there is one to prepare. It didn't take away the idea that maybe I should have something to talk about rather than anything. And yet just saying, I'm not going to prepare for the Sunday Sabsang, the infinite creativity Sabsang it seemed to take this huge weight off my mind. And I like that idea. I'm a little bit warm here in the suburbs of Paris. <clears throat> and uh, basically that does go along with the idea of what preparation is worth and whether it's worth anything at all. And uh, I mean, you know, you can prepare for stuff, but the thing is, what are you preparing for? Because you don't know when you're going to do something, you don't know what's going to happen until you do it. So, I've got this funny kind of feeling that preparing for something is is really just thinking about it as opposed to not thinking about it. When something you're going to do something in the future, you don't know what's going to happen. So preparing for it could mean thinking about it before doing it and not knowing what's going to happen, as opposed to not thinking about it, then doing it and not knowing what's going to happen. You could argue, you could argue, of course, that you need to be prepared for a lot of things. You know, if you're going to give a presentation, theoretically, you should be prepared. You should know what you're going to say. I agree. Um, but there's many things in life where you preparation is probably overblown. It's probably uh, um, taken far too seriously and people worry far too much about it. I think it fundamentally comes down to the idea that you don't know what's going to happen. And you could think about that in a presentation. I mean, most of the times when I've given a lesson or done a presentation, I've had a rough idea of what I'm going to do. Enough to see me through and for it to seem okay. And the other the other 50% comes from spontaneity, spontaneous stuff coming up. So what was the point of preparing more than 50%? You could say, you know, by that argument, you could say none at all. You could say, what was the point of preparing at all? Maybe none. <laughs> I mean, if you're giving a presentation on something or a lesson on something, theoretically, you have a rough idea of what you're going to say. So to what extent do you have to prepare? More than a few notes. I mean, this is my preparation. and This, this was almost non-existent, okay? This. That is my preparation for the next two hours. Uh, so, uh, and the, fir the first item on the menu says no preparation. <laughs> so that's, that's my preparation. For, I'll show it to you. What does it matter? This is my preparation. Apart from showing you my stuff and talking to any questions that come up, this is my preparation for the next two hours, okay? Uh, no preparation. Nothing matters. All is good. Decided not to believe in anything. 
Okay, so that's the agenda for the next two hours. <clears throat> I think I've covered the first one, no preparation. Do you prepare for stuff? I'm just gonna put up a little banner which says, ask me questions, because you might not think that you're supposed to. So if you don't ask me questions or say hello, then I'll feel very alone. I have decided though that nothing matters and all is good. You see, that's, that's the, the second two. Nothing matters and all is good. So take it this way. If people ask me a question, that's good. If people don't ask me a question, that's good. Because where's the problem? The problem is only uh, me thinking that I will feel bad in the future if nobody asks me a question. I could also think that I'm going to feel bad if someone does ask me a question. But this is all me thinking in the present about some future state, which is either theoretically going to be good or cool or theoretically not going to be so good. And we spend most of our lives doing that, don't we? Hello, Chris. I've got a little wavy hand from Chris. There you go. Hello, Chris. Nice to see you here. Yeah, so I'm just talking about preparation or lack of it. And I decided um, not to prepare. In fact, I did prepare a little card which says no preparation. So did I prepare or not? Ha ha. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, I've decided to um, yeah just go with the flow and not to worry about stuff. And I'm going to do this every week. I, about an hour before, I had that one little feeling of, mm, shall I do it this week or not? I don't know. And then I thought, well, you know, do it or don't do it. But don't worry about it. So I thought I would do it. And, and here I am. So let me, um, let me look at some stuff. How about that? So the idea is, as I said, you ask uh, questions in the chat and your question could start with creativity. It's in this thing here, you see. Creativity, ask me a question starting, well, creativity, and then ask me a question about creativity. Or productivity, and ask me a question about productivity. Or you write curiosity. This will help me get the kind of flow going, you see. Curiosity, and then you ask me a, a question about something curious. Or infinity, and you ask me a question about life, the universe, and everything. And obviously I won't answer the question, but I will talk about whatever you've, you've asked me. How does that sound? Great, so waiting for the first question. I can wait a year if you like. I'll be here every Sunday evening probably. And, uh, and that's, my little, that's my little game for the Sunday evening. <clears throat> so I'm gonna look at some uh, stuff that I've created this uh, week. Oh, maybe I wanna, do I wanna talk any more about these? So I've talked about no preparation. I've talked about nothing matters and I've talked about all is good. So I recommend you start saying to yourself that all is good. Whatever happens, all is good, okay? And then see where it goes from there. Could be a good thing to do, maybe not, I don't know, but you don't know if until it, until it happens. And if you're thinking everything's good, isn't that probably better than thinking everything's crap? So I'm gonna look at some photographs, how about that? If you don't want me to look at photographs, ask me to look, look at something else. Uh, this is what I've been doing all week. Every day of the week, I've been writing and photographing. It's not quite true, because I haven't been photographing because I've been um, inside most of the time. And uh, as, mo as many of us are at the moment, thinking about, you know, being confined, the coronavirus, what should I write about? And uh, huge number of people writing stuff online at the moment. I'm seeing all sorts of things, you know, especially in the circles that I seem to be part of. I'm in this kind of incestuous group of uh, self-helpy, stroke, spiritually type of people. And I've got this terrible feeling that we're all preaching to the converted. Um, but anyway, that's, that's kind of an aside. Uh, this is me trying to be creative. I've decided that I want to spend half my time creating stuff and half my time helping others to create stuff. Does that sound like a good balance to you? Does that, that, does that, does that make sense? So this is my photographic efforts of the week. And I realized that I've got a huge number of Paris photographs just sitting on my phone. And one of the exciting things I've been doing this week is trying to transfer photographs and other related stuff like videos from my phone to my computer and my computer doesn't like this. So this is my fun little sneak preview of the uh, nine photographs to come in this chapter, chapter four in the current book, in the current volume. I don't know if you can uh, see any things there. 
This one kind of looks naturally, doesn't it? It looks a bit natural. This one also, also down in the bottom right. So I'm trying to get some sort of uh, balance going between the top left and the bottom right. The next thing you can do in creativity of, in photography, I realized, was take it to a kind of meta level of creativity beyond one photograph. So I've tried to have coherence in my grids of nine. I've been trying to do that for a while. So I tried to have something similar in the top left and the bottom right, and in the top right and the bottom left. And I haven't finished this chapter yet, but let me show you the top right is this. And the bottom left is this. Which is kind of funny, because I imagine that this was some sort of big bazooka shooting up. You see it's the same view, shooting up um, at the bird. It's not, it's something to, to look at things with. So it's not as violent as it seems, but although it doesn't quite fit on the same page, uh, it kind of looks like the gun is shooting at the bird. <laughs> and uh, I, I did actually write a poem. I was looking at this picture, at this void, thinking how, what a terrible shame to actually have to write on this picture. I mean, I do put my little copyright thing there just so that people, you know, I mean, I don't believe in theft. I don't believe in ownership, really. But, you know, just so that if anybody does use the photograph, they use it with my name on it, theoretically. Uh, just so that, you know, what goes around comes around. People can get in touch if they want to. Uh, apparently, there are people who steal photographs. I mean, I've taken photographs off the Internet and used them. But, you know, if the name is there, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it, I guess. But uh, normally, you see, I write on the photographs. There's this one of the, the moon here. And I actually wrote about the moon. Hang on, where is it? So this is this cool moon. People were telling me, hey, there's this thing called the pink moon. No, they weren't saying there's this thing called the pink moon. They were saying, it's a pink moon tonight. It's a pink moon. And I was thinking, wow. I mean, there's a, there's a red moon, isn't there? Like a blood moon. It's when the earth is between the sun and the moon, isn't it? So it's the opposite of a solar eclipse. <clears throat> and the earth bends the, the, the rays of the sun around the earth the atmosphere or something, and it makes the um, the moon look reddish, uh, like when the sky goes red in the evening or in the morning. <laughs> That's science, folks, uh, unless it's wrong. Um, and, uh, yeah, sure enough, it kind of went a sort of muddy, vague, yellowy-ish kind of thing. I mean, it wasn't bright red. I was expecting it to be the red of the – I'm not talking about the pink moon. I'm talking about once I saw a blood moon. I was expecting it to be the color of this roof here, but it wasn't. Anyway, so apparently it was a it was a pink moon. And I went running out looking for the pink moon. I couldn't find it anywhere. There was this big white blob in the sky, but I tried to avoid that and look for the pink moon. But it, it, it actually was the white blob. That was the pink moon, which wasn't pink. And um, I think I wrote about it. Um, let me uh, give me some questions. Give me some. I didn't put the question thing up, did I? Look. You see, I'm serious about this. Ask me questions about creativity, productivity, curiosities, or infinity, life, the universe, and everything in the chat. I'll say that every few minutes and uh, see if anyone actually asked me a question. Right. So I did write about that, and this is what I wrote. In times of social confinement, like now, the slightest unusual event orbiting within our wily grasp is cause for great excitement. Thus twas when I heard macho online rumours of an imminent pink moon and how great it was going to be. Spoiler alert, it wasn't pink, but certainly a brilliant white and big being at its perigee in the same way that the worm moon isn't really a writhing ball of gross. The sturgeon moon isn't actually fish shaped and the wolf moon doesn't howl at, well, itself. These are traditional names from native North American culture, amongst other things, I think, uh, linked to seasonal events such as pink flowers blooming in the spring. Such a letdown. Oh, well, although I can't help feeling that Nick Drake lied to me all these years. There's, a, there's a, an album called Pink Moon by an old singer, dead now, called a Nick Drake. Some very beautiful sort of wispy, wispy sort of pre-suicidal uh, music from the late 60s maybe early 70s. So anyway, um, I uh, so I can't help feeling uh, that Nick Drake lied to me all these years. I'll soldier on and maybe even still look forward to the strawberry moon for what it symbolizes, because I like strawberries. I wonder if there's a Hagen-Dazs or a Cheddar moon. Now that would be cool. <laughs> 
So that was what I wrote about that. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so I was looking at this picture, <clears throat> thinking what a shame to actually have to write on it. I mean, you just you don't have to look at the, the one with the writing on, you can just look at this. It just, there was just something terribly, I mean, beautifully pure about this image. And I saw something which I hadn't even noticed, and this often happens. You see things in photographs you didn't notice until you go home and you look at them. There's this bird here, obviously. This is a bird down in the bottom left there, which is nice. You know, there's a kind of an echo of the bird, like there's an echo of the lamps. But what I didn't realize until I was trying to fit the text in somewhere, there's actually a bird sitting on top of that bottom left lamp too, which was really cool. <laughs> so, I mean, you've actually got one bird flying like in your face almost, one in the distance, and you've got one watching it all. And it was kind of a bit, bit kind of social distancing vibe going on there. You know, they're, they're kind of keeping their distance from each other. I eventually did find something to write, which I, I can probably find on my profile. And it turned into a poem. Yeah, there it is. So I ended up writing a poem called Avoidance Th Therapy. Avoidance Therapy. Uh, see if I can find the, the cadence. Uh, words, to fill, words to fill a void. Why not let the void be? Let the birds be birds. Silence can be heard, see? Listen to the trees, bees and flowers enjoyed. Freeze the powers that be. Herd followers, avoid. Was that right? Words to fill a, words to fill a void? Why not let the void be? Let the birds be birds. Silence can be heard, see? Listen to the trees, bees and flowers enjoyed. Freeze the powers that be. Herd followers, avoid. I was playing around with a lot of stuff there. I had freeze as free, free the powers. Before that, I had um, something about not listening to the powers that be. Then I thought it would be more positive to say free the powers that be or ignore, I had to ignore the powers that be, I think. Then I thought free the powers that be, which would have the kind of the free sound in it as well, E, Bs. Uh, trees and then I, it was free that I thought fair enough but it's a kind of like hippie you know free your power and all that sort of bullshit stuff which is very good of course and then I thought what about I'd lost the meaning of ignoring the powers that be and I'd moved over to into free your inner power and I was wondering if there were two ways I could get that so I, I suddenly thought of freeze the powers that be so like put them on hold don't listen to the powers that be I mean you can like social distancing and that I do think you should listen to those but uh, like you know don't listen to them too much you don't have to follow them like a sheep and then freeze is a bit like freeze you know if you listen to the birds and the flowers and you enjoy that maybe doing that will free maybe that frees the powers that be as well as in f-r-e-e-s and you know you can work out all the other blah blah like you know playing around with herd and herd and void and avoid and all that sort of stuff that's there's something absolutely incredibly painful about um, explaining a poem. <laughs> you know, it's like trying to... But, well, poems aren't far off, actually. They're, obviously, it's, it's words trying to explain words as, as opposed to words trying to explain an image. You can describe an image, but you can't, you know, give the emotion to someone in words of an image that they, they're not looking at. It just doesn't work. And poems are like that as well, I think. You, even though it's words, if you try and exp you can either say the words of the poem, so fair enough, it is what it is, or you can explain the deeper meanings and the hidden meanings and what you really meant and what inspired it, but you've just moved one step away from the poem itself, which, you know, whatever. It's whatever it is. As an artist, do you think that you should um, explain your art? or just let it be. You create something, you put it out there, and zip! I don't know what you think about that. Uh, Thespina says, hi. Hello, Thespina. Uh, this is a great composition of both words and images with the birds and the photo. Social distancing is only physical. I'm not comfortable with this term. It evokes loneliness. Happy Greek Easter, Sab. Thank you. I think I had a Greek Easter once, I think. 
Because you know, I went, I went there to get married and divorced. I remember being, being beautifully welcomed into a Greek family. <clears throat> they were, they had a, they had a place in the, in a town. I mean, a town in the middle of Greece. It wasn't on some exotic island or anything, but it was in this town, a beautiful town. Oh, no, no, not a beautiful town, a standard town. We set up a little language school there. But like a lot of families, they had an apartment in the town. They also had a house in the hills. <clears throat> and the hills were beautiful. I mean, it really was. You know, the like cars stopped. They had the last house in the village and the cars stopped there. And then it was just hill <laughs> and, you know, lavender. And do they have lavender in Greece? And chamomile that you could pick to make tea. And uh, olive groves and little old ladies in black. Uh, <laughs> um and doing little old ladies in black things. And I remember at one point um, I was going to get married. So the uncle and aunt of my future ex-wife, I think, the, uh, my God, what was it? I think the uncle's or the, or the cousin's father, who was going to be our priest at the wedding, what, was a priest. Um, and uh, for me to be able to get married in a Greek Orthodox church, I had to be Greek Orthodox. So you're looking at a Greek, or Greek Orthodox here. Unless, I mean, I undid, we undid the marriage, but I don't think I undid my Greek Orthodoxism, so I am. But the thing is, to do that, you have to get baptized. So, uh, I mean, I was 30-something, maybe 30 at the time, maybe 32 or something. Um, <clears throat> but to get to get baptized, you have to, um, normally you have this <clears throat> in the church, you have this big sort of <sighs> urn thing, which is full of water and you dip the baby in, you know, but I mean, I, I, I weighed about 70 kilos. So I don't think he was going to dip me in, but I did go through the ceremony. And so I went there, I had to take my clothes off. I, I don't, not my underwear. I think I put this, this white sheet thing on and, uh, they asked me if I wanted to, um, have the kind of traditional urn thing or the barrel you know for adults who want to get baptized they have special circumstances and the barrel was uh i mean literally a barrel it could have been for i don't know olives or petrol or something and it was kind of blue and plastic it didn't really fit in with the honor of being baptized and welcomed into the family so i decided to have the the typical urn <clears throat> and to be honest it was a bit like um <laughs> a huge egg cup on a stalk so I duly had my got in the, the the sheet and everything, and I climbed up onto this stool, and I I think I got into the egg cup thing, and I sat on the rim because obviously I couldn't fit in. And I felt a bit like a chicken laying an egg, you know. And uh, so part of the ceremony was uh, a bit of my hair was cut. I had long hair at that time. I had hair at that time, which was long, and um, they a little bit of it was cut with scissors. This was part of the ceremony. And uh, I had some water put on me, holy water, and some, it was like oil or something dabbed on me. Um, and that was it. I was just praying the egg cup wouldn't fall over, you know, with like top heavy or just break. Um, and then they dressed me in, you know, new garments and things. And uh, it was all very beautiful and symbolic. And this allowed me then to officially be Greek Orthodox, get married in a beautiful little church on a kind of island. It was wonderful. I mean, I think the bride was actually th actually threw up in the little boat <laughs> after the wedding ceremony, either because she was seasick or she was sepsick. I'm not quite sure which. So that was a funny old thing, wasn't it? Yeah. So I'm actually Greek Orthodox. I think the priest was a bit pissed off because I had longer hair than he did at that time. So, uh, yeah, you had a priest in the family. Oh, my God, they tricked you. <laughs> you don't need to get baptized unless you are a Jew or a Muslim. Well, you know, it was kind of an honor. I, I looked on it as an honor, being welcomed into the family. It was a beautiful thing. Um, if you are Catholic or other Christian denomination, you are good to get married to an Orthodox. Between you and me, it's, <gasps> are you allowed to say that? Well, you know, I was in a Greek, I, mean, I was in a modern, a modern thinking family, you know, so... I think uh, uh, the religion there is very much like woven into the fabric of society. So what they actually believe or actually don't, I'm not saying what, but it's not 100% necessarily that, you know, they're, they're fervent uh, worshippers of, of God in the traditional sense. You know, there's a lot of social fabric 
um, combined to it. It's part of the, you know, I mean, you have the the, the priest is has some role in parliament, that sort of thing. So it's, um, and that gives the culture, I found, some very, some very nice values, actually, you know, for what it's worth. Uh, so there's that. Yeah. So anyway, that was my, that was the poem in spite of that. I'm quite pleased when a poem comes out because I haven't done too many this year. And that's one of the things I want to promote is more, you know, these, I've decided to express myself in two main ways, through images and through words. I want to spend 50% of my time creating stuff and 50% helping others to create their stuff. This is my kind of vague aim in life now whilst still thinking that everything's okay you see i don't know if you caught my my lesson preparation for this session it's this no preparation was the first one the second one is nothing matters the third is all is good and the fourth is decided not to believe in anything so i've decided not to believe in anything um let me carry on with my photographs as well so it's not just a sort of monologue thanks for um Chipping in the spin-off gives me something to relate to um, to comment on. Um, everybody else or anybody else, feel free to ask me a question. Theoretically, ask me a question. This is the Sabsang, the Sa Sunday Sabsang. I want you to ask me questions around the topic of creativity. You can start with the word creativity. In in two or three years, you'll see there'll be millions of questions. You know, creativity, infinity. What was the other one? Curiosity, productivity. We're just getting started. It's fine. Everything is good. You see. Nothing matters, and all is good, okay? So, um, but if you want to be the first person ever to ask me a question, starting with the word creativity or productivity or curiosity or infinity, do it now. I won't forget you. So, yeah, so what else have we got this week? Uh, we've got this one, which is flowers, as you can see. Now, this was part of uh, photography, my photography masterclass. I needed this photograph for that. And there's another one, which I actually don't have here, unfortunately, because it hasn't been published yet. But it's two beautiful, you'd, you'd think they were autumn leaves, but they're not. They're spring leaves, but they're leaves which, I'm just trying to think, actually. Maybe they're from last year. Why would there be huge leaves out in April? Anyway, they're dangling down. The sun was behind them. They're reddish. It's some sort of maple tree. So they have a reddish color. The sun is behind them, lighting them from behind. Beautiful lighting. So that's in the bottom right of this current chapter. And up in the top left is these. These are going this way. And the leaves are hanging down this way. So again, you've got a, a nice diagonal similarity there, which is something. It's the meta, meta above the level of the photograph. Still looking for coherence in my grids of nine. Um, Vespina says, good night, keep being amazing. Yeah, you're very welcome, Vespina. Yeah, I think Greece is an hour ahead. So, oh, it's getting towards your bedtime, isn't it? It's nearly nearly eight o'clock or is it nine o'clock? Thanks for saying hello, that's fine. Uh, yeah, so um, I, these, I found these in the road, growing in the road. Um, it was to illustrate brighter than bright images and darker than dark images. In other words, make them brighter than usual. But what happens when you make an image, a photographic image, brighter than the camera wants it to be it moves it as as i often repeat it moves it towards kind of fantasy land from standard camera normal exposure it moves it towards something else a kind of you know fairy land fantasy land not quite real i don't think anything is real i don't believe in anything remember that's uh, my non-preparation number four decided not to believe in anything so I don't actually believe anything is real. Having said that, some things are theoretically realer than others. But I like to play with what we think of as real. So move my photographs away from grim reality towards something a little bit more beautiful. Um, although you're supposed to think that everything's beautiful, right? Sab, you have a goal, 50-50, creating and helping others to create. So you believe in something. Um, Um, do I? I just said that that's my goal. I don't believe that it's not really a goal. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm, whoa, 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 have you got me or haven't you? Mm, no, you haven't got me. You haven't got me. I'm just trying to work out how you haven't got me. 
are you suggesting that I believe my goal is that to to create for fifty percent of the time and help others create for fifty percent of the time? I don't believe that. It just seems to be what I'm doing. It seems to be what I said a few minutes ago. You know, nothing nothing really means anything. Everything is everything is good. Everything is everything is meaningful and meaningless. That's what I I'm kind of going for. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that things don't mean anything, but I'm not saying they mean anything any either. It's a strange way to go, isn't it? It's a strange, it's a strange approach. But I, I'm getting vaguer and vaguer in things. So, yeah, I mean, you could say uh, I've decided not to believe in anything. Ah, so you believe that you don't believe in anything? Ha ha! Gotcha. Do I believe that I that I'm not believing in anything? Yeah, but then you could I could say no. I don't believe that I. I, I believe I don't believe in believing in I, I I don't believe that I don't believe in anything. So you could say, aha, so you believe that you don't believe that you don't believe in anything. You could go on like that forever, couldn't you? Um, I'm just saying that I'm not I'm not uh, attaching my sort of flag to the mass of anything. Because if you don't believe in anything, you've got nothing to get upset about. You've got nothing to get stressed about. You've got nothing to you know um to separate you from anything else i mean the second you believe in something or that you believe you believe in something all of a sudden all the people that don't seem to believe the same thing as you are separate from you and and they could be your enemy you see i mean it depends on how you look at people who believe different things to you but in some cases they're considered the enemy right I mean, it could be, I believe that Tottenham Hotspur is the best football team in the world. Kind of random because they were the team near where I used to live. But I mean, most beliefs are pretty random, I believe. And uh, and someone else who was born near the Arsenal football club down the road might believe that they're the best team. And, you know, I mean, football fans, they, they sometimes are very jovial and they, they appreciate the fact that they've got the common liking of football in common. So, you know, underneath it all, they're still football fans. They still think football is a good sport. And without teams to play against, there wouldn't really be a, a game. So it's okay. I, you know, I tolerate people who don't think that Tottenham is the best team. They're kind of a necessary evil. But you do get football fans who almost take it to the level of, I was going to say, level of a religion. I probably shouldn't. But who take it to the level of wanting, believing that they can, they should live or die for their belief in their football team to the extent where they they plan trips to uh opponents um home grounds with the idea of being violent you know so uh and of course in some religions in some extreme cases that is uh, a similar belief isn't it that um people who don't believe the same thing as you are uh not good and possibly deserving not to live. So this is all belief. This is all, you know, I mean, obviously, that's those are extreme cases. But isn't it the sort of corollary, I can never say this word, corollary of having a belief is that you can go so far that it could end in death to anyone. Logically, it could, it, you could arrive at the point where everyone else who doesn't believe the same thing as you should be dead. Uh, that's my worry about belief. So I'm not saying I don't believe in things. Obviously, there are certain things I seem to believe in. But I don't want to say I believe in anything. Um, anyway. So either that or you're doing a good job of bullshitting. Um, I'm quite, what, what am I? Yeah, I'm not quite sure what the either that is. <laughs> either that. Yeah, maybe I'm bullshitting. But, you know, I mean, words are just words, aren't they? To what extent do words mean anything? And to what extent do actions mean anything? Instinctively, I'd say that actions speak louder than words. It's a cliche, but cliches come from some, are cliches because they often say something reasonably worth saying. So that's why I'm a, I'm a big believer in action. You know, do something and then see what happens. Um, you believe in the importance of being creative. I think fundamentally, I have to say, I don't believe in anything. And then I could say, although it seems to me 
that being creative seems to be quite fun and lead to nice feelings. Yeah, you can, yeah, I can go that far. You know, but fundamentally belief, like I said, belief, belief worries me actually. Belief worries me these days. You could even say things like, you know, yes, but don't you believe that you shouldn't kill other people? Um, I've just got a feeling belief is a human construct. I mean, do, do animals, you know, do ants have beliefs? You know, do ants believe that they shouldn't kill other ants, but they should kill invading wasps to the, to the hive, the, the ant mound? You know, I'm, just quite, I'm not quite sure what belief is, you know. Is belief really a thing? Have we invented belief along with the coming of consciousness and the ability to uh, ask ourselves what, who we are? You know, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure. Belief is founded on t too much, really. Although within the game we're playing of being human, yeah, sure. Belief. Belief is something. It's something that uh, seems to be a thing. You know, I mean, I'm not going to go out. I don't. I don't think it's a good. I don't seem to think it's a good thing to to kill other people. Having said that, it doesn't seem to worry me to kill a mosquito. So you know, it's kind of where is the line? Where is the line? Because then you could move it up, couldn't you? Move up, move it up the scale. Okay, what about a fly? Do you believe it's okay to kill a fly? Oh, we'll move it up a bit. Fly, so you can kill that? Okay. Move it up a little bit more, you know. What about um, a rat? <clears throat> Do you think it's okay to kill a rat or a mouse? You know. Well, maybe not outside, but if it's in my house, yeah. Ah, okay, so... Mm, all right. You're moving towards it being okay to... So, in fact, you went from it being fine to kill a mosquito not having too many sort of moral qualms. And then suddenly there's a mouse, you know, it's kind of cute looking and there's like Mickey, Disney. Um, uh, you know, you see what I mean? And then, you know, whoa, uh, dogs, oh, don't be ridiculous. Of course you don't kill a dog. Yeah, but some humans eat them, don't they? So, <laughs> and what about you? Do, do you eat meat? Shh. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I mean, I eat chickens, but I mean, I don't see them being killed. Oh, that's okay then. You know, um, so you move up the scale and the morals get dodgier and dodgier and more um, colloquial and regional, depending on, you know, how you've been brought up. And then it gets to the point of humans. You know, I mean, some humans think it's fine to kill other humans, depending on stuff. Uh, so, um, you know, I mean, even us, we might. There might be situations where you'd you would say yes, I think it's okay to kill this human. In a given circumstance, such as let's say they're they're about to kill your kid, for example. You know, so it's very very dodgy. That's all I'm saying. Very dodgy. It's very dodgy to have beliefs because very very quickly they can they can be shaken or become shaky. Interesting stuff, right? Um, so can I talk about any more of these? Well, I can go back to the last chapter, I guess. No, let me move on to something else. And uh, something else that I'm doing, uh, feel free to, to chime in. I haven't had one single uh, question on along the lines of creativity, infinity, curiosity, or productivity. So I'm still waiting for that. Who's going to be the lucky winner to be the first person ever to ask me a question on that? This is my um, musical mystery tour. I've decided to do this. I don't see why I should be the only one to enjoy some of the amazing music which is enjoyed by me, because obviously I've got amazing taste <clears throat> by definition, and um, you should hear some of it. <laughs> uh, of course, if you don't want to, then don't click the button. <clears throat> so I've got I've got anything from the softest, most beautiful stuff to the most heavy, aggressive stuff. Well, having said that, you know, I mean, some of the heavy, aggressive stuff like this one here, Vi Viagra Boys, and I don't know, something like a killing joke. It's heavy, aggressive stuff, but it's still pointing out some of the, the nastier sides of society. And, uh, and I like it, you know, I like it. So this is, a, this is a very interesting one. It's called Just Like You. And it's a very strange, slightly strange song with a strange singer and uh, a good pumpy beat. 
uh, check it out. Also check out the own, just the video, just the uh, the audio version if you can, because the vocals are stronger than on the video version, but the video version has video and he sings. The reason why the vocals are different is because when he, on the video, it's the normal music, but he's actually singing live. He's got the microphone on a lead. And uh, so good for him, you know, he's actually singing live, but in fact, the vocals are slightly less strong than on the standard like Spotify version. So um, check them both out, see if it's your cup of tea, see if you see anything in it. And I love this idea. I don't know about you, but music, it just comes. I, my dad used to not irritate me as such, but I used to laugh at him because every single, like as a kid, every two minutes, some word or something would come up and bam, he'd have the line from a song, he'd be quoting some poem. And I was thinking, oh, for crying out loud, you know, give it a break. You know, or what are you? You're some sort of walking encyclopedia of obscure poetry from the Middle Ages or something or Shakespeare. And my mother would kind of concur because she studied the same sort of stuff. And, and I'm thinking, what? And now, hello, my son will be, he's 10, will, will come out with a word and bam, a song comes to my mind. And it, it kind of bugs him, <laughs> you know, whoa, <laughs> spot the circle. And uh, that's what happens. Anything and everything brings up a song for me which is fun. So I'm putting them in here. I have no, no, I don't produce music myself. I've decided, you know, just let the experts do that, please. Um, with my attention span of, you know, one of those mosquitoes that I don't mind killing sometimes. I don't have enough patience to learn an instrument. Although I have got a current instrument, which is sitting there collecting dust, a musical drum one day. And I'm, I'm, I'm reassured because I have actually, not only did I have, have I started juggling, but I've actually, I actually made them myself, you see. I made these balls myself. They were just a piece of fabric and they came in a kit from Xander, Xander the, um, the Fool of Play. And you actually had to cut them out and make them with a needle and thread. And it took me two years to do the first one. I thought, okay, you've done the first one. You're not gonna juggle with one ball. So I did the other two. So I've now got three of these. <laughs> looking for the other one <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it's on the floor actually um and I'm starting to juggle at first it was like terribly frustrating the thing is you have to have there's a terrible fear of throwing the ball when there's another one in the air the instinct is to catch the one in the air instead of throwing you have to throw in order to have an empty hand to catch the one that's falling but there's some sort of innate fear. It's really weird that instead of throwing the other one, you'll catch the other one whilst you've, this one is still in your hand, whereas you should have thrown it, you see? And it's really, really interesting. That's one thing, getting over that fear of just throwing, throwing, throwing to have an empty hand to catch the other one with. The second thing is, damn it, you always throw away from you. Whoa, it's like this. Whoa. It drives me nuts. I tell you, it's far more pain. It's actually good uh, exercise for the shoulders as well, but it's incredibly painful mentally because it's frustrating. It's unbelievably frustrating to drop them all the time. You realize you're trying to do something and you can't. And as an adult, it bugs you. It's irritating. And what I normally do when I can't do something is drop it and do some, drop it, uh, no pun intended, and do something else. But I don't want to, I wanna try. I wanna at least be able to juggle three balls for a bit, possibly for as long as I want without dropping them. And also it's supposed to be really good mental exercise for older people <laughs> uh, because of the brain, I don't know, you know, left and right brain, whatever. But, um, and also I like, yes, and, and Xander, you know, he's a guy that I like and who made, who did this and I made them. So there's a, there's a personal element in there. And I want to be able to whip out my balls and juggle them, you know, and impress the, the local kid or something. So there's a few things going for it, and I want to give it a go. So that is making me think maybe, maybe, maybe if I stick with this, that'll help me start practicing my musical drum for five minutes a day. And maybe I'll be able to do that as well. So it's, it's about symbolism. I'm looking for symbolism, proving that I can do something long enough that... I get good at it and then don't give up. And then that'll give me 
the idea that I could do do that with something else as well. And that works. That's also useful because I can point to that as as evidence that it is possible to do something and keep going, be crap at first, keep going a little bit every day and get better. I need more and more examples of that in my life. Just to act as a kind of model in some cases, in the same way as my photographs, I started doing them 800 and, well, this number, this number here is, um, you can't see the bottom there. Uh, this number, this one is number 840. And I started doing these photographs 840 days ago and the texts, you know, do the math, <laughs> uh, one a day. So I found something I can do every day without losing uh, something creative, without losing enthusiasm. And that's one of the things I want to help other people do, to keep, to find the thing that they won't want to stop. Not only that, that it'll stop being an effort and it'll become part of what they do. It'll become part of them. It'll become part of you. And uh, it's a very, very interesting thing. So I'm kind of incorporating that into my, into my thing. Talking of my thing, in my group that I started the other day, let's see if I can bring it up here, called Today's the Day. Here it is. Um, by the way, if you do want to jump in with a, a comment or a question, feel free. I'd like to hear from you. You can start it. If you have a question, you can start it with creativity, the word creativity. If it's a question about creativity, how to be more creative, uh, a good way you have of being more creative, a, a problem you have with creativity, put it in the comments and I'll I'll comment on it. If it's about more about productivity, start with the word productivity and do that. If it's more about the word about curiosities of life, the funny the funny side of life, some of the crazy stuff that happens, put the word creativity, uh, curiosity first. And if it's more about the bigger questions about life, the universe and everything, to which I definitely don't have the answer, but I can talk about it, then put infinity. You know, I'm kind of keen on the word infinity. So here's a way in which I'm mixing and matching my creativity. I, did the, I made this group called Today's the Day and I'm repurposing my daily photograph as the banner to this group. The idea is you identify one thing per day that you want to remember the day for. Why? Because I have this fundamental belief that we don't appreciate our days enough. They go. Uh, in this lockdown situation, I'm not going to Paris. All I'm doing is going to the supermarket, which is two minutes to the left there. And that's only every three days. I wake up, I do my thing, I go to bed, I sleep, I wake up, I do my th days come and go. There's a couple of things I do every week and they come by as though they were days. It's really quite scary. And I have this fundamental feeling that we're not appreciating our days. And if our days, if our lives are made up of days, then if we're not appreciating our days, we're not appreciating our lives, which is a shame. So my little pet theory is, let's treat, it's not really a theory, my pet, my pet thing on this topic is, let's treat a day like a mini life. So let's consider when, you're, when you wake up, it's like being born. And give me your feeling on this. You know, if you think this is interesting, let me know if you have a question about it or how you could apply it to, to your life or your days. Let me know. You know, I'm here to discuss, not just to preach my ideas. That that doesn't have much interest to me. I mean, to an extent it does, but if it's one way, where is the interest in, in one-way communication? It's not, is it? So do let me know what you think. How do you treat your days? Does this worry you? Do you not even think about it? You know, or are you quite happy with the way things are going? No worries. Everything's cool. Nothing matters. All is good. Um, so treat it. I'm, I'm adopting the idea that it could, would be fun to treat a day like a mini life and to remember it in the same way as I'd like to be able to say at the end of what seems to be my, my whole life, that was a good life. I'm happy with that. It was fine. I'm checking out. I'm satisfied. I don't have any regrets. What about if we treated the little the little bits of our life, which are making up our life, 
which we call days, as mini lives. So that we say at the end of each day, you know what? That was a good day. That was the, that was the day I did this, this thing, this good thing. And we note it down in the group. If you do, if you put your today's the day, you start with today's the day. If you put it in early in the day before you've done it, then it's today's the day I will do such and such or today's the day I do such and such. And if you're putting it at the end of the day, then you say today's the day I did such and such. So that's fun. And I did I did add a feature, which is the idea that of putting a little icon before the words today's the day. The game in this group is that you start always with today's the day. But I wanted to make it a bit more fun. So I did I do it there somewhere. I added a new post which has icons where you. Um, yeah, there it is. It's icons you can put in front of each today's the day to give a little message. The what the first one that I wanted that I had the idea of is an accountability one because it occurred to me that a lot of people would actually like to be held accountable like an accountability partner for doing something. And I thought, well, I always I want to keep this simple for once. Today's the day. You just start always with today's the day. That's it. Nothing else. If you want in in the in depth, deeper, meaningful conversations and stuff, do it in the comments. But then I thought, wouldn't it be nice? You know, a lot of people, they want accountability. They find that an accountability partner is really cool, really useful. They're helping them get good things done. In other words, someone who, this is moving into productivity. Someone who at the end of the day says, well, <laughs> did you do it? They don't have to make you feel guilty about it, but they're going to ask you if you did it, or they're expecting you to tell them that you did it it being the thing you said you wanted to do. So you basically tell someone, I want to do this by the end of today. And then you tell them that you did it. And there's someone there expecting you to tell them. This works nicely because you're not you're not doing it alone. It's fun. And if it works both ways, then that's even funner because they tell you something that they want you to hold you accountable on and you tell them something. So at the end of the day, you check in and say, yeah, I did it. And the other person says, yeah, I did it. So you're basically saying, yeah, we did it. And you're not feeling, feeling alone. You see, you're, you're a team forging ahead, alone but, but together. So I thought, okay, let's take the rocket symbol and let's put that in front of today's today, if and only if you want to be held accountable for the action that you haven't done yet. And then I thought, the way I am, I thought, wait, let's have a whole load of icons. And some people will ignore it completely, think it's stupid. Uh, already, there's a lot of people in the group who don't post every day. This is normal. This is fine. Nothing matters. All is good. <laughs> um, so that's my mantra for the moment, you see. And uh, But I still invented it because it was fun inventing it, you see. Fun inventing it. So there's a whole bunch of others, right? Ideas wanted. I was trying to imagine what would be nice things, nice meanings to add to your today's the day if you want to. If you don't want to add an icon, just put today's the day. It's fine. But what about like ideas wanted? So you want people to give you ideas on your topic? Encourage me. You specifically want encouragement. I put one down there. Boost my confidence. That's this one here to, with the sun sign. And this one, cheer me up. Because this group isn't a coaching group. It's not, you know, it could be for people who aren't confident. Just because I'm in these circles where everyone's telling everyone else, you know, to have confidence in yourself and everything, it doesn't mean that that's everything that we have to be doing. It could just be a place where you put today's the day, I do this or I want to do this, but please give me a bit of confidence or please, you know, I'm not feeling good today. Just cheer me up a little bit. And that's it. That's all you do. You, you cheer them up without any sort of heavy like coaching or, uh, you know, feel good mantras and all the rest of that stuff. So I was playing around with my little icons. I changed the color, rainbow colors. Today's the day. Who's playing? That's if you want to suggest a kind of a game in your today's the day. Uh, boost my confidence. Um, empathy. Today's the day. That's actually supposed to be a, a couple of hearts sort of circulating. Empathy. Anyone feel the same as me type of thing. Feedback. This one here with the green recycling symbol. That's like, give me feedback on this idea. Constructive feedback. That would be useful. And... Today's the day, be gentle. Occasionally, you know, some people, they remember a day because it's a sad day. You know, like, for example, someone, I can't remember who it was. Obviously, I wouldn't say anyway. 
someone said, you know, today's the day I remember my, my mother who passed on a year ago or something like that. So it's a significant day in their life. And in that case, it might be you'd like a gentle comment. You don't feel all alone. You'd like some feedback, but only a gentle comment. So that could be that little pink flower there. And along with the, the die, the dice, which is who's playing, like you're suggesting a game, for example, there's one at the bottom. Today's the day. Life is a play. Now, this one, I wasn't quite sure about this. I like the theater symbol with the happy and the sad masks. So I was trying to think of what could go with that. And I thought, well, it goes with the theater and play, the word play, but not in the sense of having a game, the sense of a play like it's not true. And I, I quite like the idea of having that as a possibility. You say today's the day and you name something that you want to remember the day for or something you want to do. But it's in the context of realizing that we're playing a game here. It's part of the great game of life. Um, and I don't know where that will go, but I just enjoyed that idea. I love playing with icons. I love the visual side of things. I love colors as well. So that's why I put a lot of icons in. I mean, that's why I, you know, newsflash, grown man spends an hour coloring in a piece of clip art copied from something found online, and the result is uh, this. What's that about? I mean, sometimes I worry when I, I realize that my peers or people of the same age and possibly same education or something, they're, you know, directors of banks or therapists, you know, like occupational therapists or, or even a baker or, you know, a sports trainer, something serious, something not woo-woo, not vague, not like, what is it you do? And then, and then I think, well, look, there is a group of people that are called artists, and all they do is throw paint at canvas, and that's their life. They're taken seriously, aren't they? The singers, singers are taken seriously. What do they do? They make warbly sounds with their throats. What the hell? Hello? So there's this kind of feeling that I have and that I know others like me have. They don't see that everything's connected and they don't see the fact that they want to play with colors. They don't link that to a, a real artist who is ex exposes their work in galleries, exhibits their work in galleries. They don't see themselves as the same. They say, yeah, but that's a real artist. I just play around with my kids' felt tip set. Or a singer or a musician. You know, there's the real musicians who have had a disc out or, you know, are on Spotify or something. Or there, there's the, the authors who have had a book published, you know, a paper book. And then there's the wannabes who kind of self-publish this, this sort of PDF on Amazon, but they don't think that they're a real author at all. That's the danger. There's this invisible line between one and the other. And it's invisible because it isn't there. It doesn't exist. And yet in our minds, we think it does. So there's me thinking. So I went to school and to, I remember once I, when I was about to leave early in my serious career where well, I was about to leave it actually and I went to this conference and there was this I was about to give up a job in computing after a couple of years it just wasn't for me and I went to this conference and it was one someone who was on the same computing course at university and he had some sort of managerial position in Microsoft by that point after a couple of years he was a, like a high flyer and I was watching him and thinking you know wow you've done well Andy uh uh, you're really getting places and here's me I'm about to drop out and go and become a windsurfer or something and even then you know questioning my validity um, and stuff like that and maybe he's the head of Microsoft UK now for all I know and good for him and there's me coloring in pictures that I copied off clip art onto a little business card and the danger is you you compare yourself and you think you know he's done well that's a serious job I'm just pissing around, I'm no worth to anybody, I'm lost soul and all the rest of it. And yet the funny thing is it may, it may very well be the other way around. 
if you want to compare, if you want to compare. Fundamentally, where I'm going, I don't even want to compare. I don't, I don't want to compare anymore. And I encourage people not to compare themselves with anyone. But it may be that if he still is the head of Microsoft or whatever, could it be that my life is actually richer than his? It's comparison, you see. Comparison is fake. Comparison is awful. And yet, I think you can at least say, I shouldn't be comparing myself unfavorably with him. The next step is to say, all comparison is false. That's the next step. So anyway, there we are. I like playing with colors, and uh, it appears other people do too. And it won't be everyone, and I won't be taken seriously by everyone. But then again, I don't really take bankers seriously. No more than, you know, they take me seriously. So, you know, I mean, do you take money seriously? Is money really a thing? I mean, if I could give you a picture or if I could give you the monetary value of the picture, which would you choose? Which is more important? It's a question without an answer. But if you think about it, it might bring up some interesting thoughts. So that's my little story of, of the colors and the icons that I attached to this group, which is called Today's the Day, which is aiming at making you feel that each day counts. Each day is like a mini life. It sounds a bit morbid, but when you, well, the, the first bit doesn't, when you wake up, it's a bit like being born. It's a mini birth. Where were you before you were, before you woke up? Are you sure you know? You know, could you honestly say that you weren't dead before you woke up? And then the more, bit, more morbid bit, if you want to see things that way, is when you go to sleep, it's like a death. It's like dying. And one day you won't wake up. One day you'll go to sleep and it will not only will it be the death of that day, it'll be the death of that life. And you don't actually know which one it's going to be, do you? So what about um, not hedging your bets, but playing full out and considering that today is a day, I want to say at the end of this day, that was a good day. And if you say that every day, well, the day it's your last day, if you know it's your last day, you could say, well, that was a good life <laughs> and it'll be true. And if it's you don't know that it's going to be your last day, you, you'll still say that was a good day and you'll finish on a high note. That's the, the, the philosophy behind this, this group, which I think is quite fun. <clears throat> nice way of looking at things. Uh, you might want to know why I'm coloring in pictures of uh, pictures of clip art of Aboriginal animals, and I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, let me just remind you also that this is now becoming the thing that I do on, where are we? Yeah, the thing I do on Sundays. No preparation. The theme of today was, is, and will be, no preparation is the best preparation. And why do I say that? Here, let me go up to this. That's me live. Hello, me live. And what I said here is the best preparation is none at all. And I was thinking at the beginning, just before I was thinking, oh, I'd better prepare a bit. And then I thought, no, I'm not going to. Do you prepare? This is a question. Tell me, do you prepare for events or do you not prepare? Do you think the pre preparation helps you really? Helps your performance or not? Do you think you perform perform anything best when you've thought about it and you're you're desperately trying to reproduce something that you planned beforehand, or when you're being truly spontaneous and going with the flow? Let me know. Now, what this is moving towards is this Sunday evening thing is me having questions from you where you ask questions starting either creativity, and I'd like you, ask, you to ask me a question about creativity, productivity, and getting stuff done, getting shit done, curiosity, talk to me, ask me about any of the curious aspects of life. I love talking about that. It could be anything, you know, from weird wordplay to thought experiments where, you know, the answer is very obscure or there isn't one or it twists your brain around, or infinity, and that's life, the universe, and everything which is also fun, isn't it? If it isn't fun, I think that's a bit of a shame, but then again, 
nothing matters. All is good, right? So, uh, yeah, so I was wondering if um, preparation is a good thing or not. I'll put my little question, my comments thing up, see if anyone asks me another question or says hello. All right, so comments in the chat. Please give me a comment. I'd love to talk or respond or talk to something. Uh, yeah, so that's what I started with. And <clears throat> the second I said to myself, I'm not going to prepare for this. Two hours. I mean, two hours. It's not It's not nothing. You could say life is life is only this moment, which is kind of why I said I wouldn't prepare. Having said that, it still looks like there was two hours stretching out ahead of me. And theoretically, I might have I might have said to myself, wouldn't it be kind of a good idea if you prepared something? And then I said to myself, you know what, I'm going to not prepare. I'm going to decide not to prepare. And the second I did it, I relaxed. Look, I'm not saying anything. Is is the world, the sky isn't falling around about me? Uh, everything seems to be okay. Uh, when I when I was speaking, uh, I wasn't getting any comments. Now that I am speaking, I'm not getting any comments. <laughs> or even if I did get a comment, when I was speaking or not speaking, what does it matter? Nothing matters. Everything's cool. So isn't that the case with everything? Or what about if we thought it was the case with everything? What about if everything was cool, even the crap stuff? There's a guy lives downstairs. I don't know him, but I know he lives just under the room over there. And when he plays music, it goes and it goes on for quite a while, hours sometimes. And I can't hear the melody. All I can hear is the and as soon as it starts, I feel a little twist inside me. And it's like a tension. Uh, it's half physical and half emotional. And I say to myself, after I've, I've realized that that's what's happened, that I'm bugged by the music, I think to myself, what am I going to do about this? What can I do? What can't I do? I'm not going to go downstairs and talk to him. I don't even know him. I haven't even said hello to him. So I don't want the first time I meet him to be, you know, your music's bugging me. Having said that, his music's bugging me. Uh, so um, also it's Corona times. So I don't even want to approach him, you know, in case he coughed on me or something. So for those reasons, confronting him, another one would be banging on the floor with, with the broom or something, but you know, that isn't going to lead anywhere good, I think. Possibly to a hole in the floor or him coming up and punching me. So so I said to myself, okay, what are my other options? <laughs> well, basically they're they're right next to where the problem is coming from, which is inside me. You know, the tension, the physical tension. I can see him coming with his pizza now. He's probably going to put his music on in a second. And you'll be able to see what happens live on the show. Here he comes. Yeah, you bastard. <laughs> and um, if it starts, it'll be funny, won't it? So basically, inside me somewhere, inside the body here, is the physical tension and the emotional tension. So I said, well, look, sort yourself out. The answer's there, isn't it? Untensify yourself. Um, so I'm saying to myself, okay, so it's bugging you. What, what else is new? I mean, what, what other options are there? What's good about that? Well, I'm alive. Yeah, so that's kind of good, isn't it? I'm alive to feel that. All right, I'm alive. I like music. He likes music. Hey, we have something in common. Um, maybe it's a good song. Maybe he's enjoying it. Maybe he's, maybe he's leading a shit life, and that's the only time in his life where he gets any pleasure apart from eating his pizza. Hey, let him have his time, man. You know, I heard him last night screaming in the night. Maybe he has nightmares. It could have been he was having sex, but I don't think he was having sex. It seemed like he was having a nightmare. Um, so, you know, I've got my reality. He's got his. And in the end, his music doesn't go on all night, only occasionally. And 
I like music too. So, you know, I don't play my music loud, but to each their own. And, and he doing that is making me question my reactions to it and is making me grow. I feel it's making me grow and be more tolerant, especially about things which aren't as important as they might seem. You know, like a, like a being overtaken by someone where you don't think it was necessary, you know, like that, that the asshole, the idiot that overtakes you, like with a screech of dangerously, with a screech of tires and everything, to get ahead of you in a queue of traffic, which isn't moving very fast. You know, the, this sort of person, what happens? Whoa, you know, it's like white knuckle syndrome. Well, you could say it's their problem. Well, you, it's our problem that we're annoyed about it. So you can decide not to be to an extent. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure why I'm talking about that, but uh, I, I did. Hi, Mans. Hello, nice to see you. Uh, I think you jumped in in the middle of a heavy, a heavy discussion I was having with myself. So uh, if you're still there, then hello, that's nice. How are you doing? What's up with you? Are you being creative at the moment? Are you managing to be creative in these times? Is your creativity proving stronger than the uh, perhaps stress of being enclosed in a difficult situation? How are you managing to be productive and to keep positive at the moment? with you know more negative pressures that, that might be around i'd love to know and are you still able to enjoy the the beauty of life and the curiosity and the fun of life and the ridiculousness of life and are you just to finish my little group of four things that i'd like people to ask me about what about the in infinite nature of everything you know the 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 deeper deep and meaningful side of things is that still a thing when when we're in these uh, interesting times, these are the sort of things I'd like to talk about. So thanks for saying hello, and thanks for giving me three hearts. That's very nice. Uh, yeah, so um, I did want to talk about something else. I'm not even looking at the time. How are we doing? Well, I've been going for an hour and 20 minutes. How about that? <sighs> Just going to take a second. I'm going to tell you about the um, – I'm going to have a break, actually. How about that? I'm going to have a little break, and then I will tell you about – uh, feel free to put any comments there if you like. And I mean, the break is just me going through to the other room for about two or three minutes. And you can listen to some music. You can have a, a pit stop if you want, <laughs> a toilet break. And uh, also, I'll put a little picture up here, which is one of my new things. And that is about uh, my Burnt Paw project. Okay, here it is, Burnt Paw project. This is something I'm very excited about, and it's to help suffering animals in Australia. So I've got a friend who did a video, a heartfelt video in Australia about how terrible it was, the fires that, you know, the, the terrible things that happened with the fires are still terrible. They haven't disappeared. I mean, along with all the other ills in the world, they haven't disappeared just because the coronavirus has come. Um, and a lot of us are fine. We're just at home, you know, so without you know, without belittling anything, obviously, about the coronavirus, I'm stuck at home and I'm fine. <laughs> so also, when you want to help people, whether we like it or not, we do what makes us help one person rather than another, one cause rather than another. Because there's a ton of causes or ways in which we could help. What makes us choose one rather than, than another. You know, I've got a friend who put a lot of, an internet friend who put a lot of effort into helping uh, raise awareness uh, against the government thing, which would mean more uh, fishing of a certain type of fish where that fish was endangered. You know, that was what mattered to that person. What about the star starving kids in Africa, you know? That's the classic, isn't it? Well, you know, I mean, why don't we help the starving kids in Africa? Uh, why don't we help the person next door, for that matter? You know, uh, why or why do we help the person next door or the starving kids in Africa instead of the dolphins? You know, <laughs> it's the wrong question. It's the wrong question. The thing is, doing something as opposed to doing nothing. That's the thing. That's the real. If you want a question, I think that's more interesting. So basically, I'm trying to push myself to do something rather than do nothing. 
and we do things because we like it you know you can call it selfishness you can you know ego do we want to look good in the eyes of others i don't know i don't know but you do things that you like doing so you help a cause that interests you because you know you're interested in the topic or you like uh coloring in pictures of uh of uh aboriginal art stolen um animals you know that amuses me so i'm going to try and get some money through my art for trees in australia which will help wildlife as opposed to sending money to build a well in africa does that make me a good person or a bad person well again it's probably the wrong question so this is my little thing for now. Maybe next week it'll be starving children. I don't know. Um, so I'm trying to be in action. That's basically what I'm saying. I'm trying to be in action in a creative, artistic, and fun way. Yes, we're allowed to have fun in life. So I'm going to leave you with this picture of um, this amazing picture of a crocodile, alligator. Answers on a postcard. And I'll be back in a minute with uh, more blah, blah. When I'm gone, you can leave me a question if you like. Wouldn't that be amazing? I come back and there's a question. Talk to you in a second. Bye for now. Hello everyone, I'm back. Ah, is my microphone working? Yep, yeah, everything seems to be okay. Right, I've had an idea. Ah, and uh, my idea is going to be that I will pose a question and see what happens. Right, so my question is going to be, <clears throat> what's your number one creativity tip? Here we are, or productivity tip. What's your number i wonder if i do this oh i get a cute little what's your number one productivity tip question mark all right i'm going to save that add banner and i'm going to put it there 
There, what's your number one productivity tip? Right. So that's what I want you to answer in the comments, and we'll see what happens. So productivity tip, in other words, how do you get going? How do you create when you don't feel like it or, or anything else? Okay, how's the light doing on my face? Kind of, well, that'll have to do. All right, so um, this, is my, this is my burnt poor project. And my burnt poor project is, obviously it's in reference to the uh, kangaroos and any other animals with paws. And they, a lot of them got burnt, I mean the animals and probably their paws in the terrible fires. So I'm going to try and raise some money to, uh, through my art to um, help with, uh, for planting trees, help planting trees. I've contacted uh, an organization, Australian organize, wildlife organization. I know a couple of Aussies and one of them's gonna look after um, planting the trees or, or getting the money for to the the tree planters once we've done the project and it's going to be based on my art which so i'm about to i'm slowly but surely building towards nine nine of these little cards followed by nine well and at the same time concurrently uh, uh nine quiz questions I'm just trying to get the quiz. Okay, quiz question looks like this, which is kind of fun. So I've created these things, and it's a simple question, which I find off the internet. I hope it's true. You know, I kind of check, and uh, it, it seems sensible. And I put these questions like this, so they're kind of fun. Recent estimates suggest there may be up to, ah, that should be two words, maybe, maybe be. Ah. I've just seen a mistake in my thing. I'm going to have to correct that. Oh, good grief. How embarrassing. <laughs> Except I'm not embarrassed because nothing matters. All is good. I'm just going to repeat that for the rest of my life. And <laughs> everything should be fine, right? Oh, good grief. <laughs> Recent estimates suggest there may be B up to. Oh, good grief. Nobody even... Laurel Campbell, who is my friend, who is in Australia, is uh, didn't even tell me that there was a mistake. So there you go. You see, you live and learn. And the thing is, I got it out there, and now I see that there's a mistake. But at least I got it out there. It's imperfection. And I don't know if you know this, but I don't believe in imperfection or anything. I decided not to believe in anything, you see. Decided not to believe in anything. Right, that that's my my big uh, thing of the week, and I'm probably going to write an article about it in on lazypig.com, which is my new website for articles about stuff like that. So I've decided not to believe in anything, and I had a huge earlier on about an hour ago a huge discussion with myself and with uh, Chris, I think it was, about belief. What is belief? Is it a thing? Is it a thing for everyone, everything, or is it just a thing for humans? Is there a belief that is true and another belief that isn't true? Uh, is it just the same as an opinion? So I've decided it's very dangerous to believe in things. And I think you can go quite fundamental there, right back to the origin of everything, which we don't know what it is. Therefore, how can you believe in anything, anything? If you don't know fundamentally what the big, the big, the big reason we're here is, so that's what I'm kind of basing it on, and um, we'll take it from there and see what happens. So there you go. Uh, I made a mistake. I realise it now. It's already been published. I can correct it, but it's out there. Oh my God, it's out there. There was a spelling mistake or a grammar. Well, it was a typo. Obviously, I forgot to delete one of the words there. Nothing matters. All is good, right? So I'm doing quiz questions like that. I'm doing the, the the things based on my little cards here. You see, there's loads of them. There's going to be nine. This one, this one's the dodo. No, it's an emu. There it is. This one's a, can you guess, boys and girls? It's a koa. No, it's a kangaroo. It's supposed to be. This one is a tortoise. I should have made this bigger, shouldn't I? So you can see them in the, all their glory. This one is a 
lizard how cool is that yes there they are they're so fun so the point is i'm having fun which is one of the things that pushes me to do something because if i'm not having fun i don't do it and then if i don't do it it doesn't get done and nobody benefits if i do enjoy it something then i might do it and then somebody might benefit that's the uh, or you know just get something out of it or get a smile out of it or get inspiration to do something themselves so that is one of the main reasons i do anything is for some sort of feedback to feel that i'm helping others 50 percent of my time i said i don't have any beliefs then i said i spend 50 percent of my time creating stuff and the other 50 percent encouraging others to create their stuff and then somebody asked me so is that a belief then you believe that I don't know what she was asking me that I, if I believe that that's what I do or I believe that it's a good thing to do. But anyway, it was a it was a good question. I like that sort of question. Yeah. Trying to trip me up. Ah, so there we are. So that's my thing there. Uh, yeah. So um, I can look at some more photographs if you like, or you can ask me some questions. Oh, well, have I got a productivity tip? Hi, Sab. Sunny Sunday. Hello, Alice. Nice to see you. Thanks for dropping in. Uh, what's your number one productivity tip, Alice? How do you manage to get things done when you're not feeling like it? Do you have any tips on that one? I'd love to hear them. What about creativity? What's creativity for you? How do you, uh, what, 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 does it, what does it do for you? you know, what's your pleasure when you create something new? What do, you, what do you get from it? I'd love to hear your ideas on that as well. I will actually go back to last week's photos because I think it kind of straddled. Uh, from last week. So I'm going to go last on parasetmefree.com. I'm trying to remember what I wrote about those flowers. I can't remember now. <clears throat> so last week's photos were, ah, it's an interesting bunch though, wasn't it? Interesting bunch of photographs from little sparrows playing around. Hang on, let me make that bigger. Don't want my big face in this, do you? From little sparrows playing around. There it is. To, are there any other birds? Sometimes I have more than one bird in the shop. Uh, this one is quite interesting. It's uh, maybe I talked about that last week. It's uh, the the artist Gregos with his things up there on the wall. There's a plane going by. There's a flying cat from Monsieur Le Chat. Some interesting stuff there. Yeah, and uh, I think these are. I think I talked about this guy last week, so I probably won't won't talk about that too much again. It's the uh, the poet that uh, wrote. A young poet who wrote to an older poet who then wrote back to him with some amazing advice and the one that wrote back his letters were published by the young one who never got famous for his poetry but got famous for the fact that he published the letters of the other poet sent to him telling him how to be a good poet <laughs> about that and uh, i wrote a poem today did i tell you i told you earlier but you probably um weren't here earlier so maybe i could show you again <clears throat> It's, it's very nice, that, isn't it? Two poets interacting, one who was more famous than the other, and yet there was this strange relationship between them. And uh, this was nice, too, this uh, old letterbox, which is interesting, because in these days of, of, of the virus, we're, we're actually starting to send some letters again sometimes, except some of the letterboxes are, are blocked up. So, <laughs> so there's a... What did I write about? I'm trying to work, remember what I wrote about the sparrow. Let's have a look. Now, here we are. Uh, Gare de Lyon, that's a French station. I'm going to get rid of this. I don't think I need the, the bookmarks there. Gare de Lyon, I think it was, or possibly Gare d'Austerlitz, where the alleged events took place. There I was, quietly minding my own business, drinking a concourse coffee and chomping on a croissant, when all of a sudden I was assailed by two brazen little bitty birdies in search of tidbits or tidbits. British say titbits, the Americans say tidbits, although I think there's a bit of interplay there. Um, I, s <laughs> I don't know why uh, tidbits, I mean tit, tit is a kind of slang name for breast, which is maybe why Americans turned it into tidbits. And yet, I mean, if you're embarrassed about saying tit, that means you could never be an ornithologist because there's a huge family of birds which are called tits, you know, 
great tits, blue tits, lesser spotted tits. So anyway, I thought that was quite. I scattered a few crumbs onto the floor, flouting official hygiene norms, but feeling rebellious. It was a sparrow day, I believe. That was a, a weak pun, but I didn't intend anything other than a, a, a weak, nothing much. You know, I wasn't, it's not a, a pun I'm proud of or anything, but it was a kind of cute, because sparrows are kind of cute, aren't they? Little friends, my sparrows there. And um, yeah, just in case you're not aware, you just just joined the show. I, I My latest photograph, I didn't know what to put into the void. I thought I was going to spoil the void. Um, oh, I just got a message saying we're having uh, problems streaming to Facebook. So it may be that there was a bit of a something got missed out there. Uh, let's have a look at what it says. Trouble streaming to Facebook. Maybe Facebook. Is it possible the stream was ended or deleted on Facebook? We'll keep trying. Let you know if it's resolved. Please check Facebook to ensure the stream looks OK. Uh, OK. All right. We'll see if I'm still live on Facebook or not. Otherwise, I might just call it a day. Um, let me redo this. Right, am I still alive or not? <laughs> That's interesting. It says that I've got a post that goes against nudity standards, which is uh, certainly not the case. Hang on. Uh, continue, okay, continue. Let's get rid of that. Nipples, genitals, hmm. Oh, maybe because I said the word T-I-T-S. Could that be it? Uh, continue. Your post goes against community standards or activity, sexual activity. No one else can see it. Disagree with decision. Wow. That is very interesting, isn't it? That is very interesting indeed. I got kicked out because I was saying the T-I-T-S word. Amazing. Okay. Maybe I lost the entire stream. Could that be possible? Wow. How about that? Well, uh, folks, it looks like um, I got kicked out of Facebook. Um, let's remove that. Shall I remove that or not? I'm not sure. Not sure whether I should remove that or not. If I remove it, will it will the entire thing get deleted or what? Hmm, very interesting. Yeah, it seems to have disappeared entirely. How interesting. Well, maybe I'll call it a day. We were nearly at the end anyway, and uh, and see what happens. Um, <laughs> so basically, if I repost this from YouTube. Um, what happened was I got kicked out, I think, because I said the word T-I-T-S uh, too uh, loudly or vociferously. And uh, suddenly my stream was deleted or stopped. Isn't that amazing? Well, well, well. All right. So we'll call it a day and uh, I'll see you shortly. See you next week. Bye for now.